Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to this evening's Poetry Africa segment. Tonight is titled Across Borders and we are going to be celebrating poets from all over the world. Wherever you are, if you are joining us, please make sure you share with everybody, whether you're on our Facebook pages or whether you're watching on YouTube, share and make sure that you're watching with everyone else who would be interested in tonight's segment. My name is Kitu Gwangwa, and I'm the head of the Windy Brow Art Center, which is the fourth business unit of the Market Theater Foundation. And I'm honored tonight to be hosting this segment. I am very passionate about connecting and cultural exchange between continents, between countries and sharing the work that we do as artists, as activists, as activators and makers. Um, and I'm very excited about the collection of poets we have this evening. We have people from all over the world. We have um, uh, um, Moses Silitisha from South Africa. We have Ostap Slavinsky from Ukraine, Lisette Maneza from Rwanda and Belgium. We have Tolu Agbelusi from Nigeria. We have Felin Capella from Mozambique and Poet Asa. And I will be introducing them bit by bit so you can get to know a little bit more about what else it is that they do. Um, and I'm, as we would do traditionally in Africa, make sure that as the hosts of uh, an event such as this, we lead the way and we open. So I'm going to ask Re Silitisha, Moses Silitisha, to open for us um, with his performance this evening. Re Silitisha, Moses, please join us. Uh, okay. I'll just go straight to it. Tate. Um, Bare wile go wisha la mmele tswele wa fetja ka go tsena ka wa seloko monga ke rethe wa dipalisha lenga go ba le se go tlatile ka go beloga se di ba bona metsi go sa kholo fetje ke re tate nna mo redi ya ga go wa ntlokisha le ya le shidi ne nga to wa fetja ka go nokologanya di gato wa tsoga ka ona bo khwane mafato ke re le morabo wa se gerule tate go be go le boima putisho go wena go gore o be o le kae Ube ole kae ka mshaki hula ki na tetoa ka mshila wava hula kutoa kubonya tongana ka mshaki ke shula ke kadika di tote ke india mukombe ke mupata kala tuwa ni Maria kana mufita mukolomu ke rebeni uba beba ishwa ba chacha misha chama kuchana ba ipora kala kurebona ba fapa na ni dikato chala kuto tate haki bolele maga kubani tibe ki kona uba ba na kake rele ba kala ni kabe kuto ni ka mshaba ba sabile kumu chetaro ka wana mudi uba ba Rena ba gela ne ba go lebana ka mepoto le dipheru re kwele ka mongho wa nama o ralala le dilete o thetha le mepoto go fitla ka ke we tla go kota ma dipheru ka go kotsa rena tate go be go le boima putisho go ena go gore o be o le kae go ba le ke sa go pula tjatsi le go ka ke ne go be go tlhoka bona le go dilo wa go parara bona bona wa tshaba di maketi ke re go be go sa makatse ga mma go a ba tlaletse ka me kgolo bane ya ba sali ya swanela tshantsetse ka ka go ithutlana ya setjo le matsoba go tlalelana maseka a se fetse gore hloni ya re botse ga ene gore wa sala go shate wa numa wa sala go shate wa loya Tate go be go le boima putisho go gore wena o be o le kae go bane sa go ntshele ka go gore ba agelane ka moka ba be ba na le ditwe tate ka moka le matshutswa e fela rena ba agelane ba go le bana ka ditsero le mekoto le shula pa le la tshilish ka mahlo tate go ile wa ba bo hloko tate ge ke bona ba di tsa di tlogolo le di tlogolwana di biletwa ka mafuri ka mora go ga se pakanyana tsa kwa Eta 
Um, the second piece I'm going to do, it comes as a special request um, from who's that a lady called Nolazi Mashango. She suggested that I conclude with this one. It's a very small piece, very short, straight to the point. But besides that, the point that it comes as a special request, um, it's, it's, it's very, it is very close to my heart in a sense that um, it has managed to win a sort of plucky European Union. Um, according to what they say, uh, the sort of black they say, um, actually, the first to win the award in a language other than English and Africans. So I'm very glad to be pronounced uh, with those that uh, have managed to break that kind of uh, literary virginity. Yes. Mashalera, um, if I'm to explain, Mashalera is one of those species. Uh, in fact, it belongs into um, a family of wild dogs. So um, in this case, we portray um, a bunch of young men who somehow saw fit to gang rape somebody's mother on her way back from work. And while the poor woman tries to scream for help, they all chant, they all 
sing struggle songs in this destruction. So it's quite dis disastrous in a way. But here's the poem. Gare gaya boshirumba. Rotwa trotwali ya melodi rukwe la talana serato ake maswana. Kere mishi inyare twa leka lingo go fara fari we mago moto go twa mushumongo. Kobane ba shima nyana ba khasi leki de gope le metu no ya go kalima. Bare go roti shamare ba shoka hotelelo. Kobane bona ke masalerwa. Kobane bona batuba. Ke masalerwa ke re ya lo go bane mma go motho shulo go no o phetlwa molana o shupwa ka wa tshupwa ba lo e monwana ke re le ditswaro le theushwa le ka mphaka a shule wa tsora mishwa ka bona ba go bua motho go mpholi ke sila teng ka dime ge le ke ketane e tla tshamoga ka mitu ba thoba ke bolela go ka bona ke masalerwa ke tsona di ngala ba tsa tikologo go maja ba e phula melongo ba ile go fetola ka matheka ba thoma me go bo ya se politiki go ishwa di khurutle tlolo le faso go thwe mahlala mahlala di melela pele ma go go a bolla di takana thank you so much poetry africa for the invitation thank you so much moses thank you so much you are an award winning poet i mean as you mentioned you won the inaugural you were the inaugural winner of the soul plachi european union poetry award and as well as the south african literary award for first time published author i mean when you came in you you know you we unole as you say you know you moved really fast you know we appreciate your work i really wanted to um take the opportunity to just go back to that poem that you started with which actually is translated uh, means father where were you can you just share a little bit with us about what that poem meant because what you were talking about is very very important in terms of issues that we're dealing with at this po point in time in South Africa around gender-based violence it speaks to and the, the issue of masculinity being almost in a crisis. I'd, I'd really love for you to unpack that for us. Can you do okay. that? Yeah, but briefly, the poem, it's one of those uh, controversial poems in a sense that um, it's a confrontation uh, from a little dot uh, directed to um, an absent father who left her uh, um, to raise by um, an evil grandmother who could not somehow accept her as her granddaughter. So, so goes on the poem. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, thank you for that offering. We uh, appreciate your work, and uh, please continue with the with what you've been doing. It's very very important. Um, next on our offering or on our program this evening, all the way from the Ukraine. We'll be speaking to Osta Slavinsky. <laughs> I have to think just once or twice about making sure that I pronounce that properly. <laughs> Moses, could we ask you to oh, yeah. mute your mic? <laughs> Thank you for your offering. Okay, Osta is a Ukraine poet, translator, essayist, and literary cr critic. He authored five books of poetry and his poetry collections were published in Germany, Poland, Czech Republic, and Russia. And he translates fiction and nonfiction from Polish, English, Bulgarian, Macedonian, uh, Belarusian, and Russian and into Ukrainian. That was, that was a mouthful and that was really interesting to me. When did you get time to learn all of this? all of these different languages. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Hi, Poetry Africa. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, of course, it would be even more more fantastic to, to travel to you, not virtually, but physically, but we call it untravel now. So I'm really happy with this untravel. Um, thank <laughs> you for inviting me. Uh, good question, Kitu. It's, um, mm, uh, well, I'm, I'm a fan of languages, uh, different languages, and the question how these languages interfere and how they, uh, how they reflect in each other. Uh, and, uh, but m most of these languages are very uh, closely related, so this, is, this was not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're very excited about your offering this evening, and uh, I don't want to delay any further, so please go ahead. 
Um, okay, I'll begin, I'll begin with a poem, a uh, quite recent poem about the air. The air, uh, we, uh, we changed a little bit our attitude to the air in this time of pandemic, uh, because the air now is not only uh, the uh, space of freedom for us, but also uh, the source of some danger. Повітря. Повітря, яке вдихаєш, щоб втриматися на поверхні води. Повітря, якого бракує, щоб втриматися. Повітря, яке видихаєш разом із криком, повітря, яке видихаєш замість крику. Повітря, якого лишилось так мало після усіх тих років. Повітря було б страшним, якби було видимим. Тепер, коли не говоримо вже більше доби, повітря тверде, як руків'я пробачення. Повітря, гори мені, задуши мене, заткни мені безтолковий рот, зроби так, щоб ми лопотіли, як два рукави однієї сорочки, як прапор, під яким ніхто не піде у бій. Повітря, кляте, яке не втримало батька. Відступи нарешті від мене, звільни мене від своєї всюдисущої милості, від своєї прісної усмішки сестри милосердя. Обіцяю, далеко я не втечу повітря. And the next poem uh, will be about language. Uh, language uh, as, uh, as a life adventure. It's about a minor language, the situation of someone uh, whose mother tongue is a minor language in some society. And using what, uh, the thing with, uh, which is natural for a uh, minor language speaker uh, it can be uh, real, uh, can be perceived, can be regarded as a real uprising, as a political act uh, when you speak your language uh, in a community which uses major language. Мова, яку вважають інші примхою, впертістю, навмисністю, ексцентричністю, ніби хапаєш кухонний ніж, коли всі чим наберуть веделки і шматуєш ним спільну тему, аж доки з неї не бризне кров. Не я її вибрав, кажу. Повірте, мене з дитинства годували з цього ножа, я звик так їсти, я не можу без крові, я знаю, вона є в усьому, чи про музику говоримо, чи про повітря. Я довго відтирав свою мову від крові, і часом вона зовсім чиста, ніби нова, ніби то не вона калічила мене у кишені, ніби то не їй колись не встигли приробити руків'я, а потім знову замахуюсь надто сильно, аж до крові і пустки всередині, і стає вже запізно. Надто запізно просити пробачення. Uh, now comes the poem um, written in the context of uh, demonstra recent demonstrations in Belarus and the presidential demonstrations uh, which are still going on. Uh, so it's, uh, but it's not uh, the poem only about the uprising itself, it's about uh, relations between the East and the West. Uh, about uh, some uh, basic, um, uh, very fundamental misunderstanding between, between the Eastern uh, societies and the Western elites, uh, who are very often excessive, excessively prudential about, uh, about the, uh, in, in their treatment of what is going on in the East. Таких, як ми, у вишукане товариство впускають лише з розбитим обличчям, перемащених власною кров'ю. Це наша перепустка, не далі, ніж сцена, з якої нас попросять зійти, коли вдосталь поспівчувають і дадуть кілька хороших порад. Може, посадять за крайній столик, якщо вмиємося і потиснемо одне одному руки, адже жертва і агресор – це так відносно. Може, налють нам чогось міцного, саме так, як ми любимо. Але ми знаємо, дарма вони відчинили нам двері, дарма впустили цю вовчу кров, що починає їх муляти, як муляє нас вже багато років, ніби свербіш там, куди не може дотягнутися рука, ніби поріз, який вже давно мав загоїтися, фантомний біль, який називаємо фантомними, тобто неперекладними словами. Якщо ми, звірі, Ще можемо бути у чомусь єдиними, то у злорадстві, з яким спостерігаємо, як затискаються їхні кулаки, як напружуються м'язи під ремінцями годинників. Замить, тут усе буде так, як ми любимо. І сцена порожня і темна, як на початку часів. Now I'll read some, uh, some poems in English translations, uh, maybe. Uh, the next poem is called Alina, 
um, I, I, I won't explain what it's all about. <laughs> so because it's it's very clear, it's very transparent. Uh, Alina, she danced since since evenings were still warm. And the world was being rolled up like a carpet after a city festival and lights sparkled above red leaves. She danced because she wanted to turn back and she knew you couldn't resurrect things but Im by imagining them. She danced because it's better to remember with a body how she woke up, fell asleep on the wet deck, waited for things to be loaded. How she ran after a floppy-eared dog not wanting to leave it to them. She danced because there are no more places, stamps, return addresses, banks, municipal headquarters, no more street, water pump, half-painted fence, soap dishes, brushes. Everything is in a single moving point, so compressed as a wrist where all the blood has gathered. Now, a scene from 2014, a poem uh, related to the war in Eastern Ukraine. A short scene, a short di a real dialogue with a, um, with a woman who experienced the beginning of the war and forced it to flee to leave their uh, mother, uh, their, the, uh, to leave her hometown. A scene from 2014. For years, I would wake up when he returned from his night shift around three or four in the morning. He showered for a long time and went to bed just as black, coal like almost invisible in the dark. Did he simply dissolve one night? We are silent. In a moment, she bursts into laughter. Some kid runs past us, trips and falls. Right on the top of the flower sack that he's carrying, and his sneakers fly up high in the heart of a little white cloud. So white, this explosion, she says. So quiet. And what shall we do about hope? It is like a horse can neither leave it behind in a sand nor take it aboard the boat. Even more docile now than back when it carried us on its back, almost never asking for food. It is not its fault that we found nothing here, and now it is already time for the boat to sail. Perhaps when we set it free, it will return to a home of its own. What home? As Nadio, Shorobete. Вона ніби кінь, не кинути її на піску, не брати у човен, ще покірніша, ніж тоді, коли везла нас у собі, майже не просячи їсти. Та не її провина, коли ми попросимо її піти додому. Можливо, коли ми попросимо її, вона повернеться туди, до свого дому. Якого? Дому. Thank you. Thank you, Ustaf. Thank you so much for that. Um, I like that you were able to make the two offerings, the two different languages. I think uh, for me, what's important is the celebration of language. I do really enjoy that myself. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce Lizette Maneza, um, who is known for her sharp pen and sweet voice and her mix of poetry and music. She searches for her own identity her gender, her history, and place in the world. Uh, uh, you are mainly from Rwanda and Belgium. Which would you say is more home, Lisette? Oh, that's a hard question. I feel like um, because I, was, I, I, I lived in Brussels for a while, but I was raised in the Netherlands. Um, so like it's, no, it's more countries even. I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm from, like I'm a bit from- All over. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your work, um, especially when you're saying you're speaking for your history, looking for your history and your place. And I guess that's why the question, and I'm interested in that. Um, Lizette, uh, please continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy that, um, I'm very grateful that 
things like this are possible um, that we can kind of come together even though the world is not working Absolutely. with us in this way right now yeah um, so um, Ostap had a poem that was inspired by demonstrations and I also got inspired by uh, protests and demonstrations but like different ones it was in this during this summer there were a lot of protests in um, a lot of countries also in Belgium and in the Netherlands with uh, Black Lives Matter and I was in my home because I couldn't leave because of the COVID situation and I was just so frustrated um, with a lot of people in in the countries that I live in that act like racism doesn't exist uh, in their own neighborhoods and they just point at like yeah but that's in America that's in Brazil and uh, meanwhile in Brussels um, girls boys get driven by by cars uh, police police cars so yeah I wrote this um, it's a song slash poem another motherland is crying Another brother and he's dying. I'm so done seeing my people on the street singing. I can breathe, I can breathe, I can breathe, please, I can breathe. Oh. And it keeps coming when it keeps coming. How do we grieve? Ik ik druk mijn lippen op elkaar. Hoe kan ik spreken als ik breken moet? Mijn muur van stilte steunt mijn stem om niet te schreeuwen. Mijn tongval om vooral een algemeen beschaafde Nederlander, nee, nee, een algemeen beschaafde neger te zijn. De witte kruipen in mijn huid. De witte kruipen in mijn huid als het koud is ergens tussen november en december in. En ze knellen hun knieën in mijn nek en doen dit gewoon voor de lol. Doen dit gewoon voor de lol. En zelfs de karenen protesteren op het plein met bongo's en conga's alsof het kinderfeestjes zijn. Dat zwarte levens ertoe doen. Dat zwarte levens ertoe doen. Dat zwarte levens ertoe doen. En zwarte mensen worden zelfs woedend op elkaar. En Silicon Valley kijkt op ons neer alsof we pepieterige schietgebedjes zijn. Die om kwijtschelding vragen. I can breathe. I can breathe. Oh, I can breathe, please. I can breathe. Oh, I can breathe, officer. I can breathe. And it keeps coming and it keeps coming. Tell me how. How do we grieve? Thank you. Um, I have another poem. Um, so I have roots, like I, I'm from Rwanda, I'm from here, I'm from different places. And once I was traveling and I met someone when I was traveling to Lebanon in Beirut and he was from Syria, but also from Beirut in a way. And when I was listening to his story, I kind of, um like because he lived during he lived in syria during the war he, i i he, he, rem, he reminded me of my own story and the story um of my parents so i wrote a poem about that and i think it was a year ago but seeing the situation now in beirut um with with the fire um and the explosion etc i think it's um, still an important poem to me You try to you try to erase the lines on your hand palms because it reminds you of the map of Damascus. I I counted the times you lowered your voice to tell me about the isolation, the banned digital information, all the embassies that have left, how your mother's anger got stuck in your throat. How you baptized your father's paralyzed body, the hijabs in the streets now covering dead women bodies, the penises that are guns now, the burkas that protect corpses now. You try to erase the hands on your, you try to erase the lines on your hand palms. 
because it reminds you of the map of the Ma Damascus, the circulation, the political miscommunications, the confrontations, the conflicts and the bombs and the bodies and the bombs and the bodies and the boys who bombed the bodies, the documentaries you stopped watching, friends that became prisoners, innocents that became against the law, how you removed everything that reminded you of home, yet you couldn't wash off the accent on your Arabic. You tell me not to speak about it. You tell me not to speak about it. I, I try to erase the pigment of my skin because it reminds me, it reminds me, it reminds me of my grandmother. How I cross her mutism with my questions and remind her of the soldiers that pushed mothers off the hills on commando. She tells me not to speak about it. She tells me not to speak about it. She tells me not to speak about it. Although my father says I deserve to know, I had to fly to Middle Eastern ground, knock on Syrian refugee camps just to understand my story, just to understand my siblings. Then again, the boys here are not angry. They just had to raise themselves. The women are not desperate. They are risen from the dead. The fathers are not weak. Now it's just that bullets shut their egos down. The girls here do not speak, no. For unregistered children do not have a mother language. The boys here are not angry. Then again, he believes that men and boys are impossible to get raped. While abuse is in his childhood stories, let's talk about how his mother's anger got stuck in his throat. How taller could you grow than raising yourself into an orphan? How much more weight could you gain than becoming a refugee? Now see, I ask a generation of massacre, when will we stop screaming to our offsprings? Father says, the woman that raised my children comes from a lineage that cannot cope with fear. He says the woman that I went on my knees for war could have killed her from the inside of her private parts. Sol soldiers could have entered like they entered homes to leave them uninhabited. I compare you to Kigali. I compare you to my mother. I compare you to the stories. I compare you to the self and in our nakedness. In our nakedness. And in our nakedness, we meet on Middle Eastern ground. The room you've rent has shrunken you. You tell yourself, Mektub, my love. Mektub, 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 my love. You leave the door without no keys. There's nothing to be stolen. Consider the war as an omen. Consider yourself not broken. Consider yourself just homeless. And then again, you try to erase the lines on your hand palms because it reminds you of the map of Damascus. I look at the birthmarks on the back of your neck, the hairiness around your arms you tell me normally. Normally I do not shake hands for home is a secret, home is a sacred place. And how we protect, how we protect, how we protect our motherland. Thank you. I have um, one last poem. I, I'm, I'm always doubting to choose like what poem should I do, but I think I'm gonna go for this one because I heard um, the first poet was talking about, uh, Moses was talking about, well, had a poem that um, touched on masculinity and uh, then, uh, yeah, it was about like how masculinity is, is, is complex and difficult and um, perhaps also in a crisis right now. And I wrote this poem called Dear Black Boy. And it also touches on this in a way. It's a love poem, but in a way, it's more than a love poem. Dear Black Boy. Now, woman to man. Dear Black Boy. If it's not your gentleness I value, it must be your strength. As a sensitive young black male, a brown skinned man raised by a mother, colored like our continent, overworking like a slave. If it's not the way you look at me, it's the way you look at everything else. Nothing special about the way you touch me, but everything you touch loses its evil. Querido menino negro, dear black boy. I cannot express myself in your gender. 
I try not to compete with your hormones for we all came out of a fertilized egg made out of strong females combined with their husbands empowered by something much greater than them his calculation creation God God's plan now woman to man now woman to man now woman to man remember every time you intertwine you get married and every time she heals you find peace and every time she loses her value you lose your value too now this is not about pride but every kid the colored woman has carried has been your son dear child of god i am scared of more scars more wars more mental wounds more sounds in my head telling me not to love myself dear black boy tell me why did you become so strong too strong to feel don't you always feel like you have divorced yourself forced yourself got lost in yourself do you love yourself lose yourself snap yourself pinch yourself you you punish yourself enslave yourself don't you see yourself know yourself hear yourself listen listen can you can you heal yourself now rewind now woman to man now, woman to man, if it's not your gentleness I value, it must be your strength as a sensitive, young, black male. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lizette. Um, wow, champion slam poetry in Paris, champion slam poetry in Rio de Janeiro. Um, amazing work. Thank you for that. For the, thank you for that offering. Today has touched on a number of topics and issues that have come up in uh, in in this lockdown for all of us in in this pandemic. And I mean, it was almost like it was the culmination of some of the issues that we've all been dealing with across the world. I mean, gender-based violence. Um, we are the capital of that issue in South Africa, but. Black Lives Matter protest has gone in, issues of language, issues of inclusion have come to the fore. I mean, uh, there's a lot of displacement that has happened across the world, which has very, very important issues. And another one is also mental health issues that have come to the fore. I mean, this is really, really a very critical point in our time in humanity. And um, I appreciate that we have artists to look at this issue, to have these discussions, that we have artists to assist us and find the words in unpacking some of the parts that are hard to grapple with. I appreciate all of your work and, and uh, what you've done. And uh, I, I'm happy to be able to um, announce our next poet, who is a poet, a playwright, performer, educator, and lawyer, um, and based in London, Nigerian born Tolu Agbelesu. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now you have your first poetry collection, Locating Strong Woman, to be published this year, this month, uh, through Jacaranda Books. Can you tell us a little bit more about that project? Yeah, so it's my first, like you said, um, and it's really an ode to the everyday woman um, and living without performance, I guess. So it, it speaks a lot about silences. It speaks a lot about um, mother-daughter relationships and the things we go through as women and girls who are trying to navigate agency and uh, finding your own voice and, and who that is. But it's also a shed in of the trope of the strong black women um, in favor of just identifying the strength that all of us have in the everyday things that we do. Hmm. I'm, I'm interested about yesterday, there was uh, one of the poets uh, that featured was um, Retabile and she speaks to a, a saying that is so South African that says, it, uh, you strike a woman, you strike a rock, you know, and her poem said, I am not a rock you know, and uh, during this time, it's a very important thing. So when you say locating the strong woman, I mean, for us, there's always this dance between we are strong and we want to be recognized, but 
sometimes you can be too strong, you know, in how we present ourselves and people really think that they can push that hard, you know. Um, so I'm interested in your work and I'm following you and I'm very interested in, in, in you know, reading your first collection. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to help us unpack this title, The Unperformed Self. You know, I was interested in that, in your interpretation of that word, because that took me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> far. I, I feel like as, as people full stop, I feel like we perform living every day. You know, you're mm. told this is how this is how somebody who's got it together is supposed to look. So if you don't look that way, you 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 struggle with that. But specifically as women, the whole thing about this is what a real woman should look like, should do, how she should speak. We all go home and we're not that person. So what is wrong with just embracing the person that we all are without um throwing shade at, you know, the fabricated, sometimes it's necessary as a mask, but we should also be able to claim and celebrate the good and the bad and the ugly of who we are. Um, yeah, and so for me, the unperformed self is, is saying, I just wanna write about life, hmm. how it exactly is happening, not how you think it should, not how it will look good, but how it's happening. So that for posterity, there's a record of these are some of the things, you know, that this Black woman or these Black women did and how they lived and what they experienced whilst they were here. Well, I don't want to delay you any further. I really want to allow you the opportunity. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, since we've just spoken about women, I, I feel like it, I might as well start on a poem that is a celebration of the many women um, who hold me up. This is called Museum of Women. Praise for the mothers. They are loved like an expensive scrub, scraping away what is dead, what needs to die, soothing the afterburn. Praise for the sisters who show up without needing to ask what is wrong. Arms full of plantains, portable joy, who swathe your body before it can fall apart. Praise for the women who write books about women who challenge us to live beyond survival. For the girls whose stories incite renaissance. Praise for all the women who chorus groans when the truth is too heavy for words. Artists quietly molding, mending, retouching me into a masterpiece even when I don't yet acknowledge I am still under construction. If I ever said I made it this far alone, I lied. Um, the next piece I'm going to do talking about women and girls and agency is called How It Begins. When I play the number game, demand a report of 40 hands on the white rectangular tables, Aisha goes missing. I say 200 fingers and the noise of 190 fingers banging the tables sends visible shivers through Aisha. Blink. And I'd have missed her spring from her seat before catching herself, pushing her body back into her chair hands pressed into her lap. Usually, even before my ruler attempts to summon silence by slapping the white from a blackboard, she would be pencil sharp, book open, expectant against the chaos in my class of 2010 year olds. Later, the class teacher offered me answers. Strolling home yesterday, Aisha didn't notice Jamie and his little brother until he grabbed her hands and rammed her back into the dust, edged her panties aside for a dagger of fingers. Her teeth clamped into the tiny hands covering her mouth. Ruma says he screamed louder than her. He is only seven. After lunch, when I see Aisha, 
She is staring into space again, as if mourning what Jamie stole from her. The moment he enters the classroom, her face hardens. On another day, the glares thrust between them would have passed for child's play. But today, when class is over, Aisha transfers her books into a backpack. She's already practicing. Practicing a life of walking the tightrope between a silence that chokes and a silence that will make believe it is a sanctuary. Um, mothers show up a few times in this collection. So I feel I should uh, do a poem on mothers. This is called My Mother Says Our Relationship Feels Official, which she actually did at some point. But, but <laughs> one, her mind tells her she's loved me deeply. My eyes remain steady until she takes my hands, claps them together between her palms and asks for keys to a love that doesn't feel like duty. She's asking to learn. I wanna forget the pain enough to say something that absolves us both. I don't know what to say. Two, I felt naked each time when scanning head to toe, she would explain me to her guests, encourage me to be another girl, the daughter she wanted, smile more, speak louder, be less blunt, more open, less naive, mingle like the others. How do you expect to make friends, attract men, be liked, be? All those times she looked at me and only saw what wasn't. Her eyes now dare to hold me hostage. Three, I'm sorry. I'm sorry my love is not all limbs and giggles, that my smile is a slow bloom. I am sorry that I don't linger in crowded rooms, that my voice doesn't lend itself to high pitches, easy jokes, and a fairy one in lightness. You will find me in the silences between conversations. Short phrases drop in timely and heavy, a hail of awkwardness that cracks into unexpected laughter. There are people who pull life from this, for whom I am enough. For I love my mother. My mother loves me. We just rarely speak the same language. Um, the last poem is uh, a short one, which is, I figure I should end, you know, on a, on a uplifting kind of mode um, in acceptance and affirmation, given the conversation that we had before. This is a sento uh, that has all the lines borrowed from about seven different poets. The epigraph reads, here, there is no place that doesn't see you by Raina Maria Roker. You are confronted with yourself each year eyes like ripening fruit. The 38th year of my life, I had not expected to be an ordinary woman, plain as bread. Silence arrives like a servant to tidy things up. I had expected more, such days when the sun's in a drawer and the drawer is locked. I have forgotten the why of everything. I sense an indifference larger than anything. I had expected more than this. <laughs> I offer no apology. I will skip without your rope. Since you say I should not, I will create my own. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tolu. Thank you. Thank you everyone, Lizette, or stuff. This has been an amazing evening so far. Um, I'd like to introduce somebody from Mozambique who will be sharing a video with us. So he's not here with us in the cyber meeting right now. Um, he is a 
Feline Capella, and he's from Mozambique, as I said. His childhood is linked to the arts and letters. He's a marginal rebellious poet, an incessant fighter for the freedom of African people. He studied Mozambican literature, investigative journalism, and photojournalism. He is one of the most influential producers of cultural events in Mozambique, responsible for the largest and oldest 16 years of poetry nights, poetry evening. And he's a curator of the largest international festival of poetry and performing arts in Mozambique, Poet Poetas de Alma. His artistic work took him to travel around 20 countries on all continents, and he represented his country in multiple festivals, including the 2014 Poetry Africa. So we are happy to be showing some work from Feline Capella. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Felin Capel. I'm from Mozambique. So firstly, I just want to say thank you so much to Poetry Africa to inviting us to make part of this festival to represent Mozambique. And uh, we're happy to be here. And uh, firstly, I just want to say very thanks, uh, special thanks to my sister from Cuba. His name is Elena Bravo. And I just want to say thank you so much to all the organization of this uh, most important festival of poetry in the world, Poetry Africa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Meus poemas excluem os egoístas. Meus poemas têm o verso de Tchá, com força de Malco e Gandhi, com vitória de Matiba, no espírito de Samora, encarnando voz de Fidel, Hugo e Lula, nas reflexões de Che Guevara. Meus poemas têm arco e flecha, como Gia de Bico, Dupo, Garve, Amilcar, Dailai Lama. Malangatana, tana, 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 tana. Malangatana, tana, 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 malangatana. Malangatana, tana, 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 tana. Malangatana, tana, 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 malangatana. Malangatana, tana, 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 tana. Feel 
Philip Castro, Malcolm X, George Floyd. We are together, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Josina Machel, Miriam Makeba, Nina Simone, meus pais são vida. Yeah. Canta para o passo amor, vida. Querido pai, aqui se corriu, se com a chama alimentadora do povo. Seco o vento refrescador do povo, barco atracado e vazio. Seco o peixe, seco o boi, calinha e pato, todos camuflados em cabritos rejeitadores de cordas. Porém sobreviveu coelho e crocodilo virou abutre. Seco o céu e derramou lágrimas miseráveis, querido pai. Seco também bondade no coração leve dos homens secou bondade no coração leve dos homens secou lei também e paz morreu aprendi que nada seca para sempre as crianças são as flores que nunca murcham yeah. e as crianças são as flores que nunca murcham Será na aurora da colheita lúcida de corações coloridas na arca de nós. Sim, depois de secar tudo, vamos fazer amor na pérola do Índico. Descanse em paz, papá Samora. Descanse em paz, papá Samora. Descanse em paz, papá Samora. Teu filho te ama ontem, hoje e amanhã também. Teus filhos te amam ontem, hoje e amanhã também. suja e pobre dos políticos chove forte Maputo e peço aos meninos para que joguem bem no interior do teu estômago a tal febre do tal Jordan poluidor de ti de ti de ti de ti chove Maputo 
mas peço aos meninos para que se lembrem chove Maputo mas peço aos meninos para que lembrem que nos chamam Kulu Mafalala, Mashaken, Shikelem e Shipamanim os filhos que Deus pariu nesta noite não irão dormir gentlemen thank you so much for that insert that was uh, that was an amazing i wish i was right there in that space in that intimate space i have enjoyed that um you know to we have really had a wonderful offering of different languages me were ukraine and now feeling of la portuguese we had um a sepedi we've really enjoyed quite a myriad and celebrated all the diversity in our language um our last poet for this evening is poet asa from zimbabwe and um we hope that uh you are also going to be showering us with either ndebele or shona um over to you poet asa Uh, good evening. Um, my my first piece will be in um, in Shona, and then I will do an English one on on peace. 
um, the one on Inshona is mostly talking about um, how peace has been affected um, during the time, this time of Corona. So you must start now. Korelino Tazuona Kutiwone Sanamo Suchingonzi Corona Makona Zwenu Ha Mati Konera Nai Ie Rona Wenu Kutira Kurarama Upenu Kudenga Munayo Inotenga Madis and that Chichibuona Madis Nema that Asitenga Haritengui Tazuona, Tashaya Mashoko, Makona, Asikona, Anakona Wakeo, playing in the devil's plan while chasing your own plans. Maoko Mumwena Weshato. Marumwa, you cannot always teach your way through life, messing other people's lives. Marumwa, Yasui Kangova, Imi Bachikutiro, Kutayo, Tikute Oneso. Nikande Tose Shandurai Moana Corona Yeo Pen Ndaten. Thank you. That was my first. My second piece is um, going to rest in peace. Talk back, not behind, my back, I won't see you. Right back is right, right behind, back is wrong. That is why we fight. If you want peace, you got to tell me your peace of mind, I don't mind. Why you come for my head, if you can put our heads together. War with the sun, we are weak in the mind. I speak peace, but I only talk to people by the language they understand. Some people understand war, so I've joined the war, but it is in guns and knives, words and sounds, Jericho walls to the ground. I want rest in peace. I mean, war for peace, we should live in peace. But how do we move forward when nothing was ever straightforward? Those before us, if their own shortcomings and somewhat backward, no point in fingers doing so. It's pot calling care of black as though they something wrong in being black. The pot is in nowhere better than white. Pure insanity. Skin gives no man identity. We are made. We think in color more shades in our heads. We're not enlightened. Mindset is sunset. We grow up against the wall like the blind. Peace has not been found. You got power, but you live in fear. Anyone advancing outside your tent is a threat, so you lost due to fear. Now, feel your next move up my security on the other end. We make no life to save life, and then a man when there's a gun. Down on the knees, make sure the peace sign. It seems you are free when you do them in. It's all elusive. You'll be on the run like Cain. Games appear, disappear like smoke. This river, but rest till the last hour of our life's clock. Falls may disappear, still peace won't appear. Your life will be full of drama, like a theater. Ask the detector, his life is nowhere better. There is war on the surface. Peace is for the dead, they rest in peace, but it seems peace will never surface, the dead will never rise. They died for peace, but we are not upholding the ideals of peace and love. We are peacing on their graves, they rest in our peace, not in peace. We carry white, red roses to those that make our nose bleed, we make sure they touch the thorns. There's red and more red, is shed masses in trouble, unable to put food on the table, and just kills the poor ills and class struggle. It's survival of the the word is about a jungle. Whether your people or your voters rule or my people once ruled, it doesn't matter. We should coexist as a mixture. Our history is mixed up or twisted. So let's just make your peace and stop acting sick. Why the rise in the cases? Our lives matter as those of other tribes or races. Look at the woods who took to Zulu's cross us, and show us. This can only be the politics of divide and rule. We broke each other's hearts. Now let's break bread. Hi, Bo. You can't even look me in the eye. Mkawaniko ni uha rebifu where to the meek our prayers. When shall they inherit the earth? We desire peace and justice, but it seems death is the only passport to peace. Why should we be lifeless for us to have peace? Why should we rest in peace? Why can't we live in peace? I'm, this peaceless life is pissing me off. Actually, I'm impressed. I want a peace, but this release won't give me peace. Amani, now pendo. Thank you. Thank you, poet Asa. Um, you are a multi-poet, uh, poetry slam champion. 
a social commentator and a mantra writer. Now that is interesting to me. Tell us a bit more about that. Uh, when we, we, we All right. Well, we're going to allow Poet Asha a moment just to come back to us. But uh, with all the poets that we have had this evening, there have been quite a few links in some of the subject matters. And uh, I'm happy that um, Poet Asha touched in on, on, on Corona and uh, the pandemic. And definitely as Ustap said, there has been a change in the air. There is a change in the air. We are no longer the people that we were at the beginning of the year being shifted out of place by a pandemic, being affected by our, our agency has been affected in so many spaces and, ide and ideas have changed and shifted. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to bring poet Asha back, but we are thankful for his work, thankful for his words and hope to hear more about his mantra writing. You can, as, um, as you would, um, you can um, come into the um, poetryafrica.ukzn.ac and ZA um, website to get a little bit more information about all the poets that have presented this evening. I want to thank all of you for all your offerings. Um, Moses at the beginning, and um, I'd love to thank Ostap Slavinsky as well for your offering. I'd love to thank Lisette Maneza, thank you well for your gedichten and for your work. And I hope that we here in South Africa your weer sheet as you here comes and another day as you can come. And uh, thank you for Tolly at the um, Agbelusi, <laughs> thank you for your work. I'm looking forward to your collection and making it available. I guess we'll get more information on your website as well that we can find. Feline Capella, your performance and the beautiful voice accompaniment. Thank you, Poet Asa. And I'd also like to thank all of the partners and sponsors for this um, uh, festival this year, which is University of KwaZulu-Natal and Center of for Creative Arts, the US Embassy, the KwaZulu-Natal Department of Arts and Culture, the French Institute of South Africa, TOTO, South Africa, the Windy Brow Arts Center, Hear My Voice for all your technical support, and um, Ukraine Embassy, Lviv International Book Forum, NGO Publishers Forum, Central Cultural Mozambicano, Alemayo, and Brussels Poetry Fest. Thank you everyone for all of your work. Thank you everyone for all of your offerings. And I am Kitu Gwangwa. I am honored to have been part of this evening. Thank you very much and good night. Ai Borok.